everybody we're back to playing some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist. To this week we'll be playing around with the deck of Vector and his Umbral Horror deck. At least I uh, had to combine it with uh, Duma's cards at least a little bit so I can um, fill out the monster rankings because there's not that many Umbral Horror cards. Uh, in general not just the game uh, don't forget don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe all the good stuff to talkative Carl on YouTube twitch and Twitter we'll begin to uh, vector uh, uh, vectors backstory as the video goes on but it's probably one of the few uh, sadistic villains it's not even a main villain but just like one of those few in general sadistic villains it's like right up there with like uh yami merrick and uh yami bakura as far as like just overall like just cruel for the sake of being cruel well we'll get into that we'll go over his uh deck a little bit uh number c65 king over fiend requires three level uh, three level three dark monsters. Once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card, then target one face up monster your opponent controls. It loses 1000 attack and defense. While this card is, has number 65 G uh, Gen Buster as an Xyz material, it gains this effect. Effect monsters your opponent controls cannot activate their effects. Number is C43 High Manipulator of Chaos. Requires four level three dark monsters. All tokens you control can make a second attack during each battle phase. If this card has number 43 Manipulator of Souls as an Xyz material, it gains this effect. Once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card. Spells to summon one Manipulator token uh, um, uh, with a fiend type dark level one. Uh, uh, attack and you know question more attack and defense when summon its attack and defense each become equal to half the opponent's current life points okay number C 104 umbral horror masquerade requires four level five monsters when this card is special summon you can target one spell or child card on the field destroy that target if this card has number 104 masquerade as an xyz material it gains this effect once per turn during either player's turn when a monster effect is activated on your opponent's side of the field you can detach one xyz material from this card and negate the activation then you can send one random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard and if you do half your opponent's life points. Number C103, Ragnafinity. Requires three level five monsters. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card, then target one face of monster your opponent controls. Inflict damage to your opponent equal to the difference between that monster's original attack and current attack, and if you do, banish it. When this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard while it has an Xyz material, you can special summon this card, uh, number 103, Ragnar 0, must be in your graveyard to activate and to resolve this effect. Number C102, Archfiend Seraph, requires 4 level 5 monsters. If this card, if this face of card would be destroyed, you, you can detach 2 Xyz materials from this card instead. If the last Xyz material is detached from this card, inflict 1500 damage to your opponent. If this card has number 102 star Seraph Sentry as an Xyz material, it gains this effect. Once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card, then target one face of monster your opponent controls, change that target's attack to zero, and if you do, negate its effects. Number C101, Silent, Hor Silent Honor Dark. Requires three level five monsters. Once per turn, you can target one special summon monster your opponent controls, attach it to this card as a face-up Xyz material. 
when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard while it has an exceeds material you can special summon this card from your graveyard then gain life points equal to the original attack of this card number uh, silent iron dark must be in your graveyard to activate and to resolve this effect if this card is supposed to summon this way it cannot attack for the rest of this turn number 96 dark mist requires two three level two monsters once per battle during either player's turn when an attack is declared involving this card and an opponent's monster you can detach one exceeds material from this card half the attack of the opponent's monster and if you do this card gains the same amount of attack. Number 66, Master Key Beetle. Requires two level four dark monsters once per turn. You can detach one exceeds material from this card, then target one card you control except this card while this card is face up on the field. That card cannot be destroyed by card effects. If this face up card on the field will be destroyed, you can send one of its targets to the graveyard instead. Number 43, Manipulator of Souls. Requires three level two dark monsters once per turn. You can detach one Xyz material from this card, then target one number monster in your graveyard. Equip that target to this card. While equipped with a number card, this card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Once per turn, when you gain life points, except during the damage step, you can make this card gain an equal amount of attack. Also inflict that much damage to your opponent if this card is still face up on the field. And number 104, Masquerade. Requires three level four monsters. During either player's battle phase, when an opponent's monster effect is activated, you can detach one exceeds material from this card, negate the activation, and if you do, inflict 800 damage to your opponent. Once per turn, you can send the top card of your opponent's deck to the graveyard. make some adjustments here I'm really blanking on these things. Can't.
Okay. I'm feeling good with this one. Can't believe like at it's over a week since my last video and I can't believe I uh spaced like that when it comes to the uh XE's material because like I got the C levels but not the uh hey Daniel I got the C levels but not the uh original levels like I can't believe I goofed like that one second Okay, now uh, let's continue on with uh, going over these cards here. Well, I only don't, don't really need to go over the. Uh, well, might as well. Our number one hundred one silent honor arc requires two level four monsters. You can attach two exceed materials from this card, then target one special summon monster your opponent controls and face up attack position. Attach it to this card as a face up exceeds material. You can only use this effect once per turn. If this face up card will be destroyed, you can detach one exceeds material from this card instead. Number 102, Star Seraph Sentry. Requires three level four light monsters. Once per turn, you can detach one exceeds material from this card and target one face up monster your opponent controls. Half its attack also negate its effects. If this face up card on the field will be destroyed, you can detach all of its XC's materials instead. If you do, any battle damage you take this turn is halved. And number 103, Ragnar Zero, requires two level 4 monsters. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach one XC's material from this card, then target one face up attack position monster your opponent controls, whose a current attack is different from this original attack. Destroy it, and if you do, draw one card. Okay, now let's continue. Unroll Soul. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, destroy all face down non dark monsters. Umbral Horror, Umbral Horror Will of the Wisp. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one Umbral Horror monster you control or in your graveyard, except this card. This card's level becomes the current level of that monster. When this attack position card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard and was in face of attack position at the start of the damage step, destroy the monster that destroyed this card. Umber Horror Unif I'm about to say Uniform. Umber Horror Unform. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard while attacking a monster, you can spell summon two Umber Horror monsters from your deck. You can only use this effect once per turn. Umber Horror Ghoul. Once per turn, you can make this attack card's attack zero, and if you do, special summon one Umber Horror monster with zero from zero attack from your hand. And uh, Umber Horror Ghost. During your main phase, you can special summon this card and one level four or lower fiend time monster from your hand. You cannot no more summon or set the turn you activate this effect. You can only use this effect once per turn. Star Seraph Sword. Once per turn you can send one Star Seraph monster from your hand to the graveyard. This card gains attack equal to the original attack of the sent monster until the end phase. Star Seraph Sovereignty. Can I be used as an Xyz material for an Xyz summon? Except for an Xyz uh, summon that uses three or more monsters as Xyz materials. If you normal or special summon a Star Seraph monster except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, draw one card. Then you can special summon it if you if it is a Star Seraph monster. Star Seraph Scout. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one Star Seraph monster from your hand. Star Seraph Scepter. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Star Seraph monster from your deck to your hand 
a sep star seraph scepter as an Xyz monster an Xyz monster that was summoned using three or more monsters including this card on the field as Xyz materials gain this effect when an Xyz mo when it is Xyz summoned you can target one other card on the field destroy it and if you do you can draw one card star seraph scale when this card is special summoned you can special summon one star seraph monster from your hand then you can place one light monster from your graveyard on top of your deck. An Xyz monster that was summoned using three or more monsters, including this card, on the field as an Xyz material gains this effect. Once per turn, while this card has Xyz material, if a monster is special summoned from the hand, immediately draw one card. And Star Seraph Sage. Once per turn, you can send one spell card from your hand to the graveyard. Special summon one star Seraph monster from your hand. Hey, Heyman. How's everybody doing? Just just literally uh, got home from work. So I just want to spend like an hour streaming for my uh, weekly Yu Gi Oh! video. Not going to do anything else beyond that today. But we'll be back streaming 6 p.m. Chicago time in, on Friday. So. Uh, back to more cyberpunk and Assassin's Creed Valhalla so look forward to that uh, now the trap cards Xyz Soul target one Xyz monster in either player's graveyard all monsters you currently control gain attack equal to its rank times 200 then you can shuffle it into your extra deck this attack increase lasts until the end phase alright went through these Vain Betrayer when an opponent's attack monster declares an attack, activate this card by targeting the attack monster. It cannot attack, also its effects are negated while that monster is on the field during either player's uh, during each of your opponent's end phases. Send the top three cards of the opponent's deck to the graveyard. When that monster leaves the field, destroy this card. Got that number wall. Corrupted Keys. Target one face of Xyz monster you control. Special summon three Umber Horror Mirage tokens. Uh, uh, when summon each token's attack becomes equal to that Xyz monster's current attack. They cannot attack your opponent directly or be tributed except for a tribute summon. When that face of Xyz monster leaves the field, destroy these tokens. Got a, see, oh, okay. Sargasso the DD Battlefield. Each time a monster is su XE summoned, the summoning player takes 500 damage. During each player's end phase, the turn the turn the player takes 500 damage if they control a face of XE's monster. Sargasso Lighthouse. When a spell effect that would inflict damage to you is activated, you take no damage from that effect. While this card is in your graveyard, you take no damage from the effect of Sargasso the DD Battlefield. When this set card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Sargasso the DD Battlefield from your deck to your hand. Rank up Magic's Burying Force. Target one face of Xyz monster you control. Special summon your from your extra deck one number C or X, uh, Xyz monster with the same type as that monster you control but one rank higher by using it as the Xyz material. Then if possible detach one Xyz material from a monster your opponent controls, attach it to the summon monster as an Xyz material. Rank of Magic Urgent Chaos Force. Target one rank 5 or higher Xyz monster you control, spells the summon from your extra deck one C or Xyz monster that is one rank higher than that monster you control by using the Xyz material. Rank of Magic Admiration of the Thousands. Target one or more Xyz monster in each graveyard, all of the same rank. Spells the summon from your extra deck one number C or Xyz monster that is one rank higher than those monsters and attach those monsters to it as an Xyz materials. You cannot spell the summon other monsters during the turn you activate this card. And then finally, Don Thousand's Throne. 
During each of your opponent's end phases, gain life points equal to the number of times you took battle damage this turn times 500. When a number of monsters you control is targeted for an attack, except number C monsters, you can send this card to the graveyard, negate the attack, then spell to summon from your extra deck one number C monster with the same name, same number in its name as the number monster you control by using it as an exceeds material. You can only control one Don Thousand uh, Throne. Okay, now we can uh, get down to business. I'm gonna start off something relatively easy. Yeah, like I said before, uh, a v uh, vector is like like a sick bastard, and I guess it's like uh, mentally it's like something deep seated because his father was a real sick bastard. Because you know uh, the Barons like vector uh, come from the Baron world. And these little different areas of the Banyan world. And he himself uh, comes from a place where his father ruled. And um, yeah, he was just like a battle hardened warrior that cares only by conquering. Ironically, of course, uh, uh, Vector, you know, really wasn't uh, into any of that. He just, he just, uh, he was want to be a peaceful and benevolent king, but what is uh, father detesting that, you know, ideology? Try to kill his own son. His mother stood in the way, took the blow, and, um, and of course, it was like a, a tragedy. That's when the main villain of Yu Gi Oh! Zexel, Don Thousand, manipulated uh, Vector's mind, made him just as evil and twisted as his father, probably even more so. And just like you know, manipulate it like a lot of events in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Zexel. Have you ever seen like the uh, anime? You probably see seen what I'm talking about. Convincing uh, Yuma to like not, you know, giving Yuma all these burying cards and sworn him to secrecy not to tell. Uh, uh, Astro about any of it. It, it was just like, and then once Astro found out, he's just like doubted you. Might, you don't think you can trust him? It was like a very manipulative, uh, right on the level of manipulate and uh, manipulative uh, skills of uh, Yuma, uh, Yami Bakura. It was, he was just like sick and he was reveling it. It was like the, the, the art, the, the people who was like doing like the uh, art design was having a field day because the way they were just uh, drawing him sometimes seems like manic and super up close, like, you know, Moments you can be so drawn to his eyeball and see him just like reveling in his in Yuma's anguish, and then really top it all off, you know, cloning himself, making Yuma think like his alter ego Ray uh, was the real Ray, and Vector uh, was like the uh, you know was uh, just lying. But no, you know, he manipulated all that. It was it was. Very uh, genius move, but very sick.
Has anybody watched uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexo? so lucky to get that star serif scout because i would have been sunk I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel and Yu-Gi-Oh! R5 are not necessarily uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Which is, I mean, I go back to them, but not on the same level as I would with Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, Dual Monsters, or Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Because, you know, I'm pretty sure the head writer or cr the cr main creator was heavily involved with Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, 5Ds, GX, and Dual Monsters especially, but he's supposed to be, he claimed, at least, I'm not claimed, but he did say in an interview that he was supposed to be done after Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, but they forced him back into, you know, doing Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, 5Ds up to a point, because that's why after a certain point, the dub version, well, and that's also involving, uh, finances and paying the actors or something like that that after a while the they didn't finish the dub version for the final season or well, at least you know the rest no yeah there was like at a certain point like they didn't complete the final season of uh of Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds I still saw like the uh the Japanese version uh at the second half and it's still it's still good but Zexo and Arc 5 I have some issues with
Okay. He also manipulated Dr. Faker. He was a uh, vector was also instrumental in corrupting Dr. Faker, which spiraled Kite and his brother into that dark path it was on for such a long time in season one, leading into season two. What's your vector, Victor? This dude's hand uh, creatures is like tough as hell.
Yeah, big pro. Just forgot what the uh, how much power that thing had. on my freaking tricks. Kinda hoping I get the summon, but sure I can use Xyz or effect, you know, rather than um, 
reflect. Try again. If you want to see Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexo, if you got Hulu, all, uh, well, except for uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains, all the other Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, seasons are on uh, Hulu. You can binge watch them all. I just don't like the... Uh, uh, it, it's just that... Uh, Zexel and Arc 5, it's kind of like the way they treated D uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, uh, when they did Super. It's just like, it's like they become a parody of themselves, you know? It's like with a goofy looking hair that you can, uh, dang it. Had to destroy the one thing I was looking forward to using. Yeah, the goofiest looking hair, the corny, I want to say corny jokes. They all had like their fair share of corny jokes, but it's just like, have you seen uh, uh, the shows or the episodes? You probably get what I'm talking about. And especially, Arc 5 is almost worse because getting towards. The whole spoiler, by the way, they do like multi dimensional thing because some weird uh, situation with like, um, uh, I guess up to the point of Zexel, uh, It was up to the point of Zexel when they uh, decided to uh, uh, split for some reason, you know, like make it a standard dimension for just the regular norming, normal summoning way, like tribute summon. Uh, and then they made a future dimension where you can not only tribute summon, but you can also. Uh, uh, But you can also a uh, uh, fusion summon. Then so on with Xyz for their thing, and then the uh, the the pendulum summon for their thing. It's just like, or in the single summon for their thing. And it's like, okay. And then it's this nonsensical thing with this main, well not even a main bad guy. It was just like. Uh, this guy who, uh, uh, wanted to, uh, you know, bring back this thing, because like, everything was on a singular playing field, but all of a sudden, like, a big, uh, like, duelist went insane or something or other, uh, And like his daughter had to use a special card or something or other just to you know you know just to keep from the universe from breaking and and destroying or, or imploding in or on itself they have to separate this crazy duelist uh, into like different pieces uh, which makes up his overall sanity and um, it, it was like a whole non-sexual thing. It was like the main bag I had to like, uh, in order to get his daughter back, he had to uh, essentially uh, you know, do all these crazy, you know, build a, a device to, in a way, um, uh, 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 travel in between dimensions. He built a dimension 
dimension hopping machine. Just to, you know, m make a school. F Basically, he built a dual academy. At least, since he, I guess, from a, the shared universe as the universe as we knew it, uh, build backed up a dual academy. Uh, but in his, uh, you know, in his own way, instead of the way where uh Seto Kaiba had envisioned it and made all those duels just like you know you know for the most part sadistic just soldiers going dimension to dimension uh uh I mean it's, uh, and, and like dueling people stealing their chopping their souls and cars and feeling this machine in order to bring everything back to one universe now to some extent I understand yeah because uh, you know, uh, for all everybody else knew, uh, you know, like, can you imagine, like, uh, it's kind of like the whole Matrix thing. It's like, for you knew, your day-to-day -day life was it. That was your life. Can you imagine someone knocking on your door telling you, like, yeah, everything you knew about your life has been a lie, and, like, technically, this universe should not exist. And, uh, I don't know what's Yeah, like technically it should not exist, but hey, uh, then you tell a uh, person like, "Oh, you're a wag job." Like I, I know this is my life, and like you fight them on it, and that's how it was. It's like you know, and then everybody starting to slowly realize he was telling the truth because they starting to piece together like, because uh, his daughter was broken into, uh, you know, five other daughters. And each with a different parent or at least upbringing, and like the main like you know story of Yuya and his uh, friend uh, Zuzu or was it Lulu? I can't remember. I always get so confused with it. And um, uh, then uh, uh, Yuya's father, or at least um, Yuya's father's best friend. I forgot his name. He's, it's not memorable characters for the most part and I'll get to that in a minute about their little friends but he's starting to piece together it's like I got this baby girl and uh, and it, matter of fact even you, uh, Yuya's father is like we got these little babies here we're raising them but for the life of me I can't remember ever you know you know conceiving them they were just you know they're kind of here I don't remember their you know the moment they was brought into this world in the hospital I just have a baby and it's like then they started piecing it up oh my god I don't remember anything plus blank 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 and it's like yeah the main battle like, yeah these worlds don't exist I my daughter broken them apart into two sep you know, in separate dimensions essentially and it's like on the one hand I, I, it's a crappy way of how he handled the situation with, uh, uh, you know, trapping people's souls or anything like that. He could just, um, I mean, 
there's other people who've done reviews about this whole subject, but I'm just regurgitating it at this point. But I feel the same way. You made friends with the main character's father and told him about dimension hopping and all this other stuff. You could have explained him to the situation as like, like, yo, I'm from this particular dimension. This world should not exist. Neither do these X, Y, and Z roles, uh, uh, universes. And uh, uh, I'm trying to, you know, get everything back the way it used to be. And, and they might think you're crazy or anything like that, but it's just like he seems like, you know, Yuya's father is like seemed like a very genuine, uh, uh, you know, legit guy. Probably would, you know, think you're uh, uh, somewhat crazy. But he won't put you in the in the uh, paddy wagon or anything like that. He just like, you know, when you show him the proof that he needs. Uh, now yeah, I'm able to travel these different dimensions. Have you ever heard of fusion summoning or exceed summoning? Have you ever heard of anything like that? No, but they do exist in these worlds because they used to be a thing altogether. Don't got nothing. But um as far as like, you know, in Yu Gi Oh's uh Zexo and uh and Arc Five, you don't remember none of their supporting cast and they're just goofy stereotypical for the most part. And it's like and to some extent, Zex, uh, 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 to some extent, uh, uh, on both ends, but just like Kite is memorable, Shark is memorable, uh, uh, and those are his Yuma's, uh, uh, pretty much his version, or at least two different versions of Seto Kaiba in a certain way, because his his rivals. The rival is always going to be memorable, but the goofy best friend is like you, Yuma's best friend is supposed to be Gronk, this fat kid. And then uh, this uh, dumb uh, character, uh, Gong, and uh, the best friend of uh, Yuya in Arc 5. It's just that and he speaks in the third person, which I always hate in a character that speaks in a third person is so pretentious and dumb and, and they gotta give them some kind of stupid gimmick and it's like uh you know I mean the only reason Gong is even remember memorable in my mind is because you always spoke in a third person they always, I, I guess they, they did you know did his duty to try to make him effective, but it's just annoying. Annoying does not equate to memorable, at least a good memorable character. Oh, I want to save this, but. I, I gotta be honest with you, man. It's like uh, they got Juma has uh, has a uh, this supporting character like uh, uh, the cat girl that I you know dueled like in the beginning of the video. She had this little kitty cat gimmick, and he always uh, like purrs and meows. Or speak in cat puns. It's like, why do you need any of that? What was the logic behind that? It's like, sure. Other uh, previous Yu Gi Oh videos, they always had like little quirky characters, but they were, you know, 
they were still minor to us. Like, I guess they had the gotta have that kind of uh, Rex Raptor, Weaver Underwood, the Meko Tsunami kind of character. But there was substance to those characters, you know? They wasn't gimmicky for gimmicky's sake. You know, Meko Tsunami had an actual backstory. You know, he had a reason uh, for doing what he was uh, doing, you know? And uh, we were on Rex, same thing. Or even um, uh, in Yugo GX, uh, there was gimmicky characters, but you know they had like some semblance of a backstory. It what uh, it was fleshed out just enough, but you, but you got it, you know. Like, and all those uh, best friends really don't live up to someone like Jesse Anderson or Joey Wheeler. Hell, uh... put two numbers down but oh. but it's just like what I said before it's like uh Jukyo uh Zexo and uh, Arc 5 just became like just parodies of Yu-Gi-Oh. Thank you. 
Earlier in the week, just to mentally refresh my memory about how uh, uh, Vector's deck typically works, I watched his uh, duels, uh, and I'm like, yeah, it's yeah, it's just man, not bad. It was just like I wish. It was like more. I wish I had more, you know? I wish there was more support uh, cards to this deck I could, you know, readily utilize. I mentioned in the, uh, my last Yu-Gi-Oh video, and like I really uh, think that you know this game deserves an update because like, or at least after you know uh, maybe like a season or two, or even like the entire series of like you know these different arcs, and like after Yu-Gi-Oh Zexo ended, you'll figure after. You know they'll be on it with making sure like every deck every card that you saw on the show was an actual card but like only they doing they're taking their slow time doing it but like this umber horror uh deck i don't know if there was actual a solid deck you can make out of it for real i know there are umber horror cards but as i'm seeing right now you can't you can barely make a solid deck out of it you can't even make a 20 card uh, deck out of that. Cause I mean, honestly, you uh, you know you, you should be like rolling them out. You know, uh, every time you do like a series, you should be rolling these things out, or at least because you know these kind of things. Like people working at Konami probably should be knowing in advance or just following up with the rest of us uh, so far as like uh what kind of cards are being dealt with you know and it's like okay there's this umber horror cards oh, all right I, I, I want like uh all the stuff that i've seen on the show i want them uh, legit uh cards uh have them roll out you know by the end of the year or or, or that kind of thing but, hmm. Oh, speaking of uh, cards being rolled out, 
if you uh, follow me on Twitter, I open up a, uh, I didn't show myself, open up the pack, but I, you know, you know, because it's been like last time I opened up a, a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon cards were back last summer during the shutdown period. Because it's been, it was, it was like so long since I had like opened up a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards with my own hard-earned money. So I uh, opened up uh, a bunch of new packs, uh, like actual boxes and stuff. Because back in the day when I was a little kid, you know. I didn't have that kind of money to uh, 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 make a pack of my own, or at least buy uh, a pack. Uh, I usually had to ask, like, "Oh, my uh, uh, parents to like uh, some money just to get like, those booster packs," which you know it was fine, but it was like you know I want those like those like you know, solid decks that come in, but I got my own money. I can buy as much Yu-Gi-Oh cards as I want to. Not literally, but just if I feel like getting some Yu-Gi-Oh cards or Pokemon cards, I damn sure will. And it's like, I got myself three, the three Egyptian God cards. And I posted it on my Twitter. So you can easily see that. Or if you watch my, or if you go to my YouTube channel, I put it on the header. You can see uh, the picture of the three Egyptian God cards on the header. And I'm just like, I never thought in my lifetime I'd get the three Egyptian God cards in my lifetime. And I'm legit, I'm telling people, like, I'm going to be buried with these things. Nobody would touch them. I don't care, like, uh, you know, because each new generation of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, not generation, but each year of uh, new Yu-Gi-Oh cards or uh, these different decks and stuff usually turn out, like, you know, better than the previous versions, like, the synchro will always be better than the Frisian, and the XE is always be better than the synchro kind of stuff. It's like those kind of decks usually is like a power balance. But I got the three Egyptian God cards. I don't give a crap. I, I I'm ecstatic. You know. Well, let's go. Suppose someone you can put some one star set from your hand. Then you can place one like monster from your girl on top of your deck. Hmm. I want to get at least Masquerade once. Yeah, I know. It happens to the even the, the best of streamers. You, you gotta roll with it. Okay. During your player's battle phase, when a opponent's monster effect is activated, you can attach one of these materials. Okay. 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 I was hoping I could at least get Masquerade summoned. Alright, this is going to be the uh, last match for the day, win or lose. I'll be uh, taking a break uh, uh, tomorrow. I'll be posting uh, new videos soon, but um, next week I'm going to be very busy at work, so you uh probably be uh, seeing little streams here. 
uh, uh, next week. But I'm gonna make up for it by this weekend, just like trying to get like, uh, well, I'm, nothing will change that much because I'm just gonna be uh, maintaining, just concentrating uh, on putting out uh, quickly you know, some cyberpunk and uh, and uh, Valhalla videos. It's just that I'm gonna try to, you know, get myself for this Friday and Saturday, but by uh, Sunday and Monday, uh, it's probably gonna be like at least one video at a time. At least until next weekend, where I can start spamming uh, some more stuff. But hopefully, I'll be done. Cyro jar would probably be very useful right now. I want to try one more time. What games that I'm, uh, what games are you planning to bring this year? Hopefully, uh, within like the summertime, maybe leading to fall, depending on uh, when I can get those new consoles. I, well, not even just the consoles, but I want to play uh, Horizon Zero Dawn 2, the new God of War game, which will probably be, well, not probably, it will be my first God of War game I'll be playing later on. I don't know if that's supposed to be coming out later this year in the winter, maybe. I can't remember. But then the you know uh, the Suicide Squad, uh, Suicide Squad game and the uh, Gotham Knights game and that's coming out later this year, I think uh, I will be playing on the new consoles. So uh, you can look forward to those, but. Before then, uh, I'll just be wrapping up like some other games and just be concentrating on like putting out like uh, more uh, 
video discussions and stuff like that that I've been uh, noodling with for a while. Yeah, PS5 uh, Digital Edition and the... Um, Uh, yeah, the PS5 Digital Edition and the Xbox Series S Digital, because they're a whole lot cheaper. But I probably will get them one at a time. But probably gonna be the PS5 Digital first because I think the PlayStation games. I think uh, the um, what's her uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is coming out first before anything else. Uh, around that time, hopefully the PS5 will be available available for purchase uh, that's what I hope but don't know until it happens Yeah, it's probably a good idea to wait anyway. Oh my god, I can't get a, catch a break. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to wait anyway. Uh, the PS4 is fine. It's still solid. It, it, it does the job very well. I mean, honestly... You know, besides, I think the Xbox Series X and S shows significant a, a significant upgrade, but the PS4 to PS5, there's noticeable slight differences. But so far as like the uh, rate of speed and all that stuff, it's noticeable, but it's just like very minute. Whereas as far as like uh, you can, you know, tell. I mean, honestly, if you can look up on uh, YouTube and um, check out like the features, the difference between like the uh, previous generations and the new generations, uh, uh, easily describe it. You know, check out Game Informer when they uh, on YouTube. They explain it better than I, as far as like showing off the the differences between the new generations and the previous generations but honestly so far so far as what i've saw uh you know when it comes to the playstation uh there is changes but it's so minute because the ps4 still does its job very well honestly you know, ps4 can easily held out for a whole nother year but like there is like it's like the share button or at least this feature on a ps5 that i that's still stuck in my mind above all anything else is that uh 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 you can easily i think the xbox the new xbox generation does this as well i can't remember if they do but basically it's like if you want to re quickly record something or uh like for a clip or if you are stuck on something and uh instead of going on youtube try to figure out how to get it done you can easily i think it's like a click of a button uh one click of the button like in the middle i think and they it's like a quick response and they give you like helpful hints without breaking away from your gameplay which is really cool
put here. Uh, Nintendo uh, Switch is in a good state of affairs, honestly. I haven't heard anything about uh, a new console, uh, but I'm pretty sure we might be a year or two away before before they decide to do anything like that. And I'm happy with the Nintendo Switch that I have. It's honestly, it, it, it does the job very well. Just like, it's, it's no issues. It's like, honestly, zero, zero issues, which is a good thing. That's uh, pretty much uh, Jikyo. Uh, it's not. Uh, that's pretty much Vector. Uh, he's a pretty like I liked him as a character. As far as like Yu-Gi-Oh villains, and I will discuss that because eventually, I keep promising, but it's like some of the stuff like I want to get through with other characters uh, for this uh, 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 for this Yu-Gi-Oh game like each week. Uh, uh, next week will be a new archetype video and this is going to be like an interesting one because I've been noodling a bit about trying it out but I want to do like a, a combination of blue eyes white dragon cards and the red eyes dragon cards uh, the blue eyes and red eyes dragon cards in combination in a single deck I'm gonna try to put that one together and try it out and see if uh, how it works out, and we'll uh, play that at some point next week. So that will want to be interesting. Yeah. So the next couple of weeks will be like archetype videos because I've been putting those off for a minute. Uh, but uh, yeah, th that'll be interesting to uh, mess around with. Uh, see if it, uh, it works in. Uh, see if it works at all. Because it's pretty much like a yin and yang thing. I'm, in case I don't bring it up by that point, I want to say it now. When it comes to the blue eyes dragon cards, or at least the blue eyes in general, it, it's a, a dragon that's supposed it, like Kaiba represents uh, un, uh, unrelenting power in a way, like just like this unchecked power, or at least like the kind of like a. a, a you know, like I said, I can't I can't really put in the other different words. It's pretty much that, and then the red eyes is just uh, untapped potential or something to that effect. So they pretty much like a yin and yang kind of balance, and it's supposed to represent like how Kaiba and uh, uh, Kaiba and Joey are. So I can't wait to show that off. But anyway, uh, thank you for joining me tonight for uh another Yu-Gi-Oh profile i'll try these there's so many videos i gotta have up by tomorrow's gonna be my whole day pretty much uh but uh you take care 
I uh, hope you have a great week. I'll see you all this Friday, around somewhere around 6 p.m. Chicago time, like normally, uh, for just uh, more Cyberpunk and Valhalla. It's just going to be those two for at least a little while until I am done with those. Uh, so take care, and I'll see you guys soon.